Remember these old wives' tales when we were growing up? If you sit too close to the TV, your eyes will go square. If the wind changes, your face will stay like that. Or even the urban legends like waking up in an ice bath without your kidneys. No? Just me. Well, believe it or not, there are a number of enduring myths when it comes to running that at best can give you a little giggle, but at worst can derail your running entirely. So we're going to look at the top 10 running myths that I hear week in, week out, and we're going to bust them wide open to keep you safe and happy out there running. Let's get it. Running is bad for your knees. Really? In this day and age, are we still believing that? Here's the thing that I think. There are numerous studies, so many now, and the overwhelming weight of evidence points towards running being anything but bad for your knees. In fact, actually, when they looked at runners and triathletes that were 20 against people that were 60 and 70 in terms of knee health and muscle strength around the knees, they found that there wasn't really much difference. The biggest difference was in the people that didn't do any exercise. I would say the only caveat to that would be that yes, if you run with poor technique, and you don't get it looked at and you continually get injured and especially in your knees then yeah it's going to be bad for your knees but that's something that you can fix running isn't inherently bad for your knees so it's time to change the narrative around that because like with anything like with any part of the body legs knees hips running is good for it and we've got to accept that and get out there one myth that we used to buy into but have changed our minds is that anything between aerobic base miles and high intensity miles is a waste of time or junk miles but actually that's not true yes some training sessions will have more benefit than others but if you're getting out there running then it has some value I did used to get quite stressed if my heart rate wasn't exactly where i planned it to be in a session but actually all miles in the legs will teach your body something and your mind so don't worry too much if your sessions aren't always super specific because every mile really does count. Runners don't walk. Really? Okay, this whole montage is going to be of us walking. In races and in training. First of all, I like to think of running as a mindset, not an action anyway. If you go out of your door with the intent of being better, then it wouldn't matter how you got from A to B. It's the love of the process that does it for us. When we're out, if we want to run, we will. And if we want to walk, we will. Or we'll stop when we want. Would someone say that you're not a runner because you're walking during the recovery section of an interval session? No. So you keep doing what you want. Get out there and run, walk, or even crawl for anyone else cares. You're lapping everyone else that's sat on the couch. Have you ever been told that if you want to get faster as a runner, then you have to incorporate speed work into your weekly sessions? Now, I've got to be careful with this myth because actually, to a certain extent, that is true. If you want to get faster, then yes, yeah, speed work is a great way of doing that. A little bit of high intensity training or even tempo sessions would be superb. But this is the myth bit that I need to bust is, it's not the only way of getting faster. Because if you're like me, and you have legs that just are not great with speed work, or certainly regular speed work, you can still get faster by focusing on other aspects of your running, like your aerobic base. You know, I was at my absolute fastest last year, when all I was doing was base work, but I was supplementing it with uh, being on the bike and things like that. I didn't put any high intensity interval sessions into my running when I was training for an Ironman and yet I still got faster. So the myth here is not that doing speed work in training will get you faster, it's that it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. But definitely don't be that person who goes out every single session running hard trying to PB in a, uh, in a training session. Now that is not the speed you want. By running fast all the time, you're only gonna end up injured really. Be selective about when you do it. How about this one? Have you ever heard people say to you, the lighter you are, the faster you will go, when that be in triathlon or running? I need to pick this apart and I need to pick it apart carefully, okay, because I'm aware that there are a lot of factors at play here. But yes, 
in the early days, if you are significantly over the weight that you believe you should be, of course, losing a little bit of weight is going to make you go faster. But there is always a tipping point and there are always other things that you have to consider in this. And the fact is, lighter does not always equal faster. There will become a point when you're getting too light, there's not enough muscle mass, your health is deteriorating because maybe you're not taking in as much as you need to fuel the training that you're doing. Many runners have fallen foul of this delicate balance, let's put it, and without me wanting to go into too much detail or indeed being critical of anyone that's ever gone through this process, lighter doesn't always equal faster. In fact, there's pretty good evidence now that a well-nourished and stronger body is going to be faster than just a lighter body. Some people say that you need to just increase your miles and run more miles in order to get faster in your races, but that's not necessarily true. And for some people, just increasing your miles load can cause injury or other problems. And actually, the best way to approach it is that getting the best quality out of your sessions is much better than sheer quantity. So you don't have to run six, seven times a week in order to get faster. You have to work out what works for your body and really build a well-structured plan with good quality sessions in there. That's gonna be the ticket to getting faster in your races. So it's about knowing your body and knowing what works. Some people can run five or six days a week. But for others, three or four sessions is absolutely enough. So it's about training smart. And within those three or four, you can have your aerobic base sessions, your interval sessions, your tempo session, and get really, really, really good quality out of your training in order to get faster. Something that seems to have come over from team sports in the past is the idea that we need to stretch before we run. Static stretching before exercise, which is stretching whilst we stay still, has actually been proven to be detrimental to our performance in that it elongates our muscles for a short time and makes them more susceptible to injury whilst they're adapting. So rather than static stretch, try dynamic stretching, which is stretching whilst moving, and mobility drills, all aimed at gently taking the body through its range of motion and promoting good run technique. And if you still want to static stretch, then save that for after exercise, not before. There is nothing more annoying than someone saying to you, if it's not on Strava, it didn't happen. Because, it, let me just break this down a little bit. Social media has a lot to answer for, in my opinion, when it comes to running. The constant need to prove yourself to someone else, that you're doing the miles or that you're competing with someone else or you're matching someone else. And I just don't buy into that because this is your journey. This is your lifetime journey, hopefully. So we need to stop comparing to other people or even necessarily sharing it with other people sometimes to help with our mental health and to make sure it all stays intrinsic in terms of our motivation. So what I would say if anyone says if it's not on Strava, it didn't happen, I would say, yeah, but my body knows. Because because ultimately, at the end of the day, the main thing is you could do 10 kilometers and not share it on Strava. You could do 10 kilometers and not even take your watch out on the run. Your body still knows that you did that. And ultimately, that's the most important thing for your training is this doesn't forget. Strava might not go on, watch might not upload. This won't forget. Your body is ultimately the most important thing. So you know what? It did happen if it wasn't on Strava. What about this one? As you get older, you're gonna get slower. Now, that bit's not a myth, obviously. We're not all gonna just get faster as we get older and eventually be faster than Usain Bolt when we're 100 years old. That's not the myth bit. I think the myth bit is when you start slowing down, when you start getting older, because lots of people I know that I've spoken to are like almost resigned to getting slower from about the age of 40 and you know, that's just not the case. Take me and Mary for a classic example. We're both in our 40s, but I still very genuinely believe that our fastest days are ahead of us. And that would be borne out by the evidence. And you look at a world where we have marathon runners in their 60s that can run 2.30 and you've got someone who just broke the world record 
for the over 70s marathon by running it. I think she ran it in 254, which was the female world record. Then what the evidence is pointing to nowadays is that the decline is much, much slower and much more delayed than we think. It doesn't really only start to take hold from 60 onwards, but even then, it's slow if you continue running. The decline is most seen in people that are sedentary and don't running or stop running. In fact, we have a good friend over here who's every bit as fast as us and he's 55, still smashing it and probably gonna get faster. And this quote springs to mind and is relevant for this situation. You don't stop moving because you get old. You get old because you stop moving. Another enduring myth is that you can't call yourself a runner until you run a marathon. Which again is just nonsense. Some of the world's best runners have not and possibly will not ever run a marathon. Running is about joy. And for some of us, marathons do bring joy. But equally, 5k park runs might be the height of joy for people. Or half marathons. Or even 1500 meters on the track. There is no set distance that you have to run in order to get your I'm a runner badge to sew onto your tracksuit. Whatever distance or speed, and whether it's road, trail, or treadmill, sorry, I mean treadmill, if you put one foot in front of the other to move between A and B to the best of your abilities, you're a runner for life. If this video brought you value, then consider subscribing to the channel, but as always, no hard sell from me. But if you enjoyed the video, you're definitely going to enjoy this video, which is the nine hard truths of being a runner, which is essentially just the things that I wish someone had have told me before I started running. And you're never going to guess number nine, but you need to be prepared for it. See you Sunday.